I'm Bella, the maker mama boss lady behind Fiber and Fox, and this is episode number 40, my gracious 40, of my podcast. Welcome. If you are just joining me, I am a crochet designer. I also knit, and this is where I talk about all of it, uh, all the yarny things. Uh, you are very welcome to hang out here. We are getting really close to uh, 3,000 subscribers, so if you are not already subscribed, this is where I do the please consider subscribing and pressing the notification bell and all of that stuff. You know how to do it. You, you know how YouTube works by now. Um, but yeah, it is a really big deal. If you stick around and subscribe, that means a ton to me. And also there's going to be a giveaway coming up real soon with some pretty good stuff. We'll talk about that a little more in a second. But like I said, I'm Bella. This is my podcast, episode 40. Thank you for being here for either just this one or all of it. I really, really, really appreciate you guys. Admin bits, I guess. 3,000 subscribers would be an admin bit. Uh, so I do have a giveaway coming up probably next episode. We're really close. I am waiting though on um, somebody shipping some stuff from Australia. Uh, so I have somebody doing stitch markers. Uh, I have a yarn dyer. And I have someone who's going to be doing a custom crochet hook as well. So uh, if you have any interest in being part of uh, being able to win that giveaway, make sure you're subscribed to this channel so that you don't miss the giveaway um, episode coming up, probably episode 41, but stay tuned. Uh, so yes, that is, I think, everything admin-wise. I know last time I mentioned that I was doing a de-stash over on my fiber.and.fox.de-stash, mouthful, account. Um, last, did it last Friday? There are a couple lots left up there, about a little over half the stuff's cleared out, but there is some stuff left. Um, bunches of yarn, a lot of stitch markers, I think some um, faux fur pom-poms. So if you had any interest in that and maybe you missed it last time, uh, and basically I've been going through and deleting stuff as it's sold. So if it's still up there, chances are it is still available. So go check out fiber.and.fox.destash and maybe grab some of some, some of some, that's a thing I just said, some of the goodies from my stash to add to yours. And that concludes the admin section. Just kidding, it does not. Uh, I am supposed to tell you at the beginning that everything you need to know about me is linked down below the video, Instagram, the blog, and the like. And there are also show notes that uh, will correspond with this episode for anything that I talk about. So that actually concludes the admin section. Now for the designy bits. I usually talk about, um, you know, designs here, but I did forget to mention because, you know, I really did a great job on that admin bit. This like never has its own section, but what am I wearing? Um, this is the home girl sweater by Meg Made With Love, who I do not know, Megan um, Shames, Shimes, I'm not sure how you said her last name, but I don't know if she's still designing. She had a second kit a couple years ago and has kind of disappeared. Um, so I hope she's doing well, but um, she was someone that I loved making her patterns and testing for and just really enjoyed on Instagram. But anyway, Meg Made With Love. This is a modified version of her homegirl sweater. I don't exactly remember what I did because I think I made this back in 2018, 2019 or so, but I do have a blog post about the modifications that I did. Main thing I know for sure is um, it's a crocheted sweater. It has kind of a really cool, almost like um, knit broken rib look to it. Um, that runs this way on the body. And it's really kind of a mind boggling crochet stitch. Um, I don't know if she came up with it or pulled it from somewhere else, but really love it. This is one of my most wearable garments because that's a thing people say. Um, but my biggest modification is, I guess, two things. I made it smaller. Hers was really oversized and I changed the gauge, made it smaller. Um, and I also did knit ribbings. Uh, hers had crochet ribbings that I think were seamed on. I mean, you could definitely apply crochet ribbings as well, but I did, can I show you the hem of my sweater? <laughs> Um, please don't think I'm put together because I'm also wearing pajama pants, but um, yes, I wear this all the time and it's machine washable because I made it out of Hobby Lobby Soft and Sleek DK, which is really fingering, in the colorway Dijon, I believe. It's all in the blog post. I'll link it in the show notes, but um, yeah, this is like my favorite gross green, gross green mustard um, Dijon, I guess, but I, I don't eat mustard that's this color, so I don't know but really love it. As far as acrylic goes, it's a great budget friendly, um, kind of indie dyed like knockoff. It's not, it's not their indie dyed line, which I refuse to participate in and still am iffy about the whole thing. But, um, this was before that anyway, it's got like a, not really a marl, but like a tonal 
color variation vibe to it so it doesn't look like a straight up solid color which kind of gives it that indie dyed look but um it is one that i suggest to testers a lot who aren't necessarily interested in working with indie dyed at whatever point um it's a great fingering weight sub for a lot of patterns and it's machine washable it does have you know a bit of pilling on it i'm just gonna keep showing you my sleeve over and over again <laughs> a little bit of pilling um but for being worn an awful lot and it's probably about three years old now um so yeah two three years old really love it and it's it's super super soft it doesn't have the plasticky acrylic feel to it at all it's just like really soft so i really like it um i wear this one a lot so that is what i am wearing design wise fields guardian is still in testing um and i am still waiting on yarn to be making my <laughs> i had intended to be making a second um, not a second version, but just a second, a remake of the same pattern, um, along with my testers, but I kind of misgaged how long custom dyed yarn took. So I still don't have the yarn, but I am going to make another one because I want it for like Christmas time. It's like a pretty poppy red. But anyway, what I am working on now, um, I showed you last time, but I'll show you the adult size just to have a comparison. It's still not blocked. I need to have a major blocking party this week. A block party, if you will. Um, but this is the Through the Rain Cowl. This is the adult size one. It's got this beautiful kind of faux mosaic knitting, um, faux slip stitch looking crochet. It is crochet um, detail to it. And I was really pleased to see, um, I guess spoilers if you're following the Stephen West M Cowl, but um, in his clue one, I'm not doing it, but I've kind of been following along with people who are, I do not have the time to dedicate to that sort of commitment, but, um, his part of clue one has kind of a similar, like V stitch mosaic thing going on. Um, so I was really pleased to see that cause you know, um, I'm right up there as far as designer quality with Stephen West. Uh, so anyway, yes, <laughs> this is my through the rain cowl and I need to block it, but I absolutely love it. It's not quite cool enough yet to wear, so I haven't rushed blocking it, but I do need to block it and get photos. But yes, it is done in Lane and Lotus. The main colorway is the mist, this gray. And then the rainbow colors in the background are a mini skein set, also from Lane and Lotus. Last I checked, she still has them in her shop. She recently announced that she is gonna be taking kind of a, a step back from dying and more dying on like a, um, brings her joy kind of basis rather than a have to for business kind of basis, which I, I totally respect. So um, if you want to grab them from Jen while she still has them, I do not know if they will be available again. But last I looked, they were in the shop. Um, so this is the adult size. And I designed it such that you could, with the 20 gram, 720 gram mini set, um, then create a either child or toddler size matching version as well if you got another main color. So I haven't made the child size yet, but I did make the toddler size also not blocked. Made that, ooh, I don't know if I have the ball band. Oh, I do, okay. Um, so I made that. And guys, this one, I am so, I, I'm kind of more obsessed with this one. Like, look at, look how pretty. This one's just like more confusing looking because the gray on this is very defined and you can see it really well. But this one's like got a tonal gray and it's so pretty. It's the same mini skeins, um, but the main color I used on this one was silver key stitches in a one of a kind and one of her 50 gram skeins. Um, so she has a color that's very similar to this that I believe is called that snow moon, maybe. Um, but this was like a slight variation of that color. So she did it as a one of a kind, but she always has 50 gram skeins, I believe in her shop. And this toddler size is perfect with a 50 gram. I had, I haven't weighed it yet. I don't think, but I had a, a bit, just barely a bit left over. Um, so you could definitely do it with a hundred gram skein as well and have a little less, um, I guess yarn chicken woes, but as long as you gauge, you'll be fine. There was several, several grams left. Um, but yeah, I, if, if I had had this in a full skein, I absolutely, absolutely would steal this one for myself and use this color. Cause I just think, I mean, they're both gorgeous, but I just love the way that this one looks. It's like, so 
I don't know, it just kind of fades together really beautifully. So I really like it with this tonal gray. And I am going to write up, I don't have enough to physically make the third one with the mini skein set, um, but if you were to make it yourself, you would have enough for either the child, toddler, child or toddler, and an adult. So one adult size and one youth-ish size. Um, I don't think you could get all three, but I do still have some yarn left. It's going to go back up here, um, and I don't know if you can see. Oh no, you can't see up there. On top of there, I have a yarn bowl that my daughter painted me for last Christmas, and it has all of my rainbow like minis and rainbow projects left over. Um, so eventually that's going to be some really amazing rainbow, something or another. But yes, I need to write up the child size and then yeah, get this pattern and testing. So hopefully, hopefully November sometime, be on the lookout for the through the rain cowl. Very, very pleased. And it's really a really easy stitch once you get going, very repetitive. And you're just like counting basically when you need to change the mini skein rows, but there's not a lot of math or counting or anything involved. It's very mindless. And I've now made these two and now I have a, I have another thing to show you. Hang on. Okay. I kind of had intended to play that off more smoothly, but, um, <laughs> if you're my mother, mama, mother of mine, avert your eyes, look away, fast forward till you get to something else. <laughs> So um, I have another adult size version because I wanted to try it out with a, um, as a two skein project instead of using the minis if you didn't want to get mini skeins. And it actually works up really amazing in a gradient or a like whatever you call this kind of yarn. This always reminds me of like a hand spun type thing. I don't really even know what this is called, but um, I made another version in this is Zauberwall, I believe is how you pronounce it, from Chopel, 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 I think. Um, it's a German yarn company, to the best of my knowledge. Um, and they make the crazy barber poly hand spun looking <laughs> yarn. Um, so a lot of this tag is in another language. But what can I tell you about this yarn? I don't know if I have a colorway. I don't even know. It is 75% strong quality superwash is what it says. It feels very much more woolier than a superwash, I would say. Um, but it does say that it's superwash, I think. But then it also says 75% virgin wool and 25% nylon, so I'm a little confused. Let's like look right here. I'm confused as to whether or not it is actually superwash. Because there's a word here that I don't know what it means. Maybe I should look it up. But it says 75% strong quality superwash, 25% polyamide, 75% virgin wool, 25% nylon. Is that what the two like strands are? Like the two plies are different? That wouldn't make sense. I need to look up more about this yarn. Um, but it is fingering weight. <laughs> and I don't know what the color is. I think that's the color number there. That there maybe. But it's got a little like, it shows you on the, the little, um, tag that comes with it. It's not really a ball band, but tag that comes with it. It shows you kind of what the color variation is going to play out like. And I have, you know, this much left. I have not weighed it, but a bit. Um, so yeah, I wanted to try it with something like this, or you could use like a gradient. I need to show you with my hands, a gradient cake. Um, and it, it plays out really nicely. So at that point, it's a two skein pattern, two hank pattern, two ball pattern. Ooh, that looks really fun on screen. So the other color is Cascade Yarns Heritage, which is superwash and nylon. In the color, again, it's just a number. And I picked both of these up at U and U um, recently with this project in mind. 
And the Cascade is a really nice soft superwash. Um, I have a little bit left that I'm going to use for heels, toes, or cuffs or something of a sock. But yeah, I really think that this... I don't think this one is super wash. I'm so confused. I need to like look up because this is very much has that soft, like, you know, that semi plasticky super wash feel. And this, this is wooly. <laughs> like this one's wooly. <laughs> and I bought it thinking they were both super wash, which doesn't super matter because um, it is a cowl and it's not going in like the washing machine or anything. And my, and my mom is a, a um, knitter as well. So she knows how to care for yarn, but it just, it's a little scratchier. But she also has a much higher wool tolerance than I do. But I feel like I could tolerate this if I really tried. But it is it is on the scratchy side for me. Because I have a little, little sensitive baby neck. But I do really love how it came together. What I don't love is like it's all, I don't know if you can see, it's all very like two-tone marly. Except for this like band right here with solid red and solid orange. And I thought about cutting it out. But I was like, oh, I'm sure it'll repeat somewhere and there'll be some other solid ones. But then there like wasn't <laughs> like, like those are all like two strands of different colors and then that's just like red um so i don't know what that's about <laughs> i've never worked with this particular yarn before if that's normal but i know a lot of people make shawls out of it so like it should be neck softish but um i guess maybe i don't know <laughs> I hope it softens up and that my mama will wear it because it's really pretty. She really likes like this color green, which is what drew me to it, but also rainbow. That might be me projecting my rainbow onto her. But. Um, so yeah, this I haven't decided either birthday or Christmas present. Her birthday's coming up right before Christmas. So one or the other, and it looks really nice with my sweater. <laughs> but I can't wear it because it's too scratchy. So it will be a present from my mama. So all together we have, I need to get a photo of these like stacked because they're kind of satisfying together. Sorry I keep looking down if you can't see me. But... So different yarn choices really change this cowl and I'm very excited about it. I do, I don't know, I don't, <laughs> I need to get pictures of me in the adult size and my daughter in the child size, but I don't think I know any like like in my mind, I want like a seven or eight year old to be moder modeling the photo in the pattern, but I don't really know any like seven or eight year olds close enough to be like, hey, you want to model a cowl and be in my pattern and I can use your face all over the internet? Um, maybe, I, maybe there's one, I don't know. So I may have to use somebody else's photos um, on like Ravelry. So testers, bring me your middle-aged youths so I can use their pictures because yeah I'm um, putting it on like it would fit on my daughter but it would be bigger so having it like modeled on the right size wouldn't quite be right now I'm trying to think of which children like I definitely know children from like my church and extended family and whatnot but I feel like it would be weird to be like hey you want to be in a photo shoot with me and my daughter on the cover of a pattern um so I don't know how I'm going to do that exactly but I feel like I should have it modeled somewhere right so that is the design section Coming up soon, through the rain cowl. Stay tuned. Finished objects. It's a doozy. I finished, well, again, it's not blocked, but it will be. Um, I finished my child size feather wing shawl for my daughter's birthday. Um, it's, I think, it's supposed to be like an angel or a fairy, but we're, we're pretending it's an owl. Um, it's going to be hard to show you. I'll try to back up. Okay. It looks so... I mean, it looks big on screen, I guess, but when I hold it up, I'm like, surely this won't fit. But I've measured and remeasured, and it is the size to pattern and the size um, of her actual wingspan. And I haven't blocked it yet, so it'll be a little bit bigger. It just looks so tiny compared to like shawls that I would make. Like, it looks like a bib on me. Um, but yeah, it'll be much nicer once I block it out. But this is the Child Size Featherwing Shawl by Crafty Intentions, um, who is normally a very whimsical and like mythological, fanciful amigurumi designer. Um, so to my knowledge, this is her only shawl pattern. She does have the adult size version as well, which is even more complicated, but um, it kind of went like viral last, I think I said last year this time, and then I realized it was like February of 2021, but what is years anymore? Anyway, 
<laughs> it really took off the adult size one and then I think she did a child size as well. I made the, let's see, I think I did the child size three, which is like a 37, 38 or something wingspan, like fingertip to fingertip, um, literal wingspan. And yeah, once I block it out, I made sure, um, I think I was talking about last time how I met gauge unblocked. Um, and there was nothing in pattern that specified blocking your gauge, which normally I assume is the, the standard, but um, she did have a note in there about maybe choose a yarn that would block well for drape, but knowing that she's a amigurumi designer, um, I assumed that it was an unblocked gauge and that was definitely a gamble, but it actually came out exactly, exactly like to measurement. So I, it was an unblocked gauge in case anybody is wondering, I believe that was the correct, correct way to go. Um, and I did choose a super wash yarn so I could block it out and make it more drapey. The yarns that I used on this, yeah, it was some intense yarn chicken. Like I was going back and forth between ordering more because I could tell I was almost running out and I knew I had ordered from Knit Picks and I was like, it's gonna take, you know, and everything's taking extra long to ship and whatever. Um, so I was like, I know I may need more but I don't wanna order more because I can't return it. So I don't really wanna be stuck with like these gradient Although I guess I could have used it to make that. Why am I pointing up there? That's, there's nothing up there. <laughs> it's on the floor. <laughs> I could have used it to make the uh, cowl, I guess, if I wanted to make a gradient one. But yes, um, I used Stroll Fingering Wheat. The way that, this is not cohesive. The way the pattern works is it's written all, it's one size or one, one instructions for the whole pattern but the way the sizing changes is with gauge and yarn choice. So like the itty bitty toddler size is, I think the smallest is maybe 2T. Um, she wouldn't put a shawl really on a baby. Um, I think 2T is the smallest and I think it goes up to 14 years. And like the smallest one is fingering weight with whatever size hook. And then the largest one is actually in bulky weight, I think with a obviously much larger hook. So the pattern instructions remain the same, but the shawl gauge um, hook and yarn change. So the 3T was called for in DK. I ended up holding two, I mean, this doesn't show you the color, obviously. This is what's left of the two gradient cakes, but I used two gradient cakes of Stroll um, fingering weight from Knit Picks or We Crochet. Um, I don't remember which one was which now. I think this, this bit that's left was from See You Later. And like I said, it's a, 7525. And then the other color was ice sculpture and it was the paler blues. And this is, you know, what's left of that. And they were, if you want to see the actual um, cakes, you have to go back and look at the last episode. But yeah, I have like, I did weigh it, but I remember how much, but like, this is probably what, two grams left of each. So I cut it really close on that. So I'm glad that the gauge was whatever lined up with what it was supposed to be because I would have had, I don't know, could have got, could have gotten dicey. And I didn't really want to order more of this yarn, so I'm glad that I didn't have to. Um, so you create the whole, I started at this side. I kind of, at first I was annoyed at like the variation in the wing colors. Um, by the way, she did request being a blue owl, so that's why it's blue, um, daytime blue specifically. Um, I was kind of annoyed by the like gradient fade change that like this wing is totally a different color, but I think it's actually kind of cool. Um, so what you do is you work each individual feather. The pattern is very detailed. Um, it's not intuitive at all because it is all like short rows. I don't know if you can see, but there's just like a lot of shaping going on in there. So the, the main body of the pattern is all of these feathers. And then you go around after the fact with another color, which I did in Swish. DK, um, so I didn't hold this one double in the color Arctic. Um, and that's a 100% um, superwash, no nylon. Um, so yeah, you go around and the shawl looked really good like beforehand. It was kind of, I don't know, it kind of just more looked like a cool shawl shape. Um, but once you went around with this, like, I don't know if she calls it an edging or whatever, but really defining each feather, uh, it really, really kind of made the whole thing. Um, and this, 
this blue color is kind of like the light icy blue is really what I wanted more the whole shawl to be like the rest of it's kind of tealy but um, I think I hope she's gonna be thrilled with it um, it's for her birthday like I said and we're having a dress-up party um, for her little friends and stuff so yeah I need to block it it will look much better and I'll probably I don't know if I'll show it to you again blocked but I will try to get pictures um, of the back of her or something with it on because I don't really share pictures but um, just so you can see it in full full action my plan currently is to maybe put to attach it to the dress that she's wearing it's like a tutu ballerina dress thing <laughs> um, so it has straps so I think I can just maybe um, tie like the back of it to the straps itself so it stays put and then I'm going to put, I think, just like hair ties, um, attach those, maybe just even tie them on so I could take them off later um, so she can put it around her wrist and wear it. I was going to like make tie straps, but that seemed, um, I don't know, a little more permanent. So I might just literally just tie on some hair ties so she can put them on her wrist and then wear it and fly around her little just friend birthday party. So we think it came out. I think it came out pretty good. My one concern is I know it's gonna block really well, but like this, like ribbing, or not ribbing, but the like feather boning in between is slip stitches. So I don't know if that's gonna grow as well with blocking, but I do need to get the edges to stop rumpling like that. But this ice or this Arctic color, the DK one was major yarn chicken. I did add a second round around um, each the outside edge. I don't know if you can tell. So I went around the amount of times uh, that she required which was once like around the whole thing and like working up and down in between all the feathers And then I went around again just hoping to give the edge some more definition and I had Probably Five and a half feet of yarn left <laughs> so it is very yarn chickeny there um, so I was You know freaking out a little bit I could have ripped out that extra edging but I think it looks nicer and more defined with the second round of single crochets around it. So yeah, I'm gonna block it and it'll be good to go, I think. Um, I will try to get some pictures at some point, if not here, up on my Instagram. And yeah, I'm really proud. It was a hard pattern to follow. I was talking about it a little bit last time. It was just constant like, do five of these stitches and then seven of this and then slip stitch here and then work back the other way but leave 14 stitches unworked. And I'm, I'm making up these numbers, but it was very like, just random numbers because you're shaping these feathers and all the feathers are different. I think there's only like two that are the same throughout the whole thing or something, um, which I could have just totally made up. But looking at it, working from end to end, it was it was all completely different. Um, and it was some very clever shaping and the pattern itself is, I said 99 pages, but I think a lot of it, there's like, it's broken into two parts. So there's like a um, no picture version, like, the second half of the pattern is no pictures and the first pat pattern is with pictures. So I think I got up to page like 50 or 60 maybe, um, which again, I could be making up, but it wasn't all 99 pages that I had to follow. And there's a lot of photos in there and a lot of helpful tips. So it is, I guess, reasonable that it's 99 pages, but it was, it was a lot. Um, but she did very detailed, like exactly how many stitches you needed in each row and how many would be left over. And so that, that was nice. Um, but it's not a potato chip watch a movie and not focus on it and I was working on it at night so my daughter wouldn't see it so I was just like there's definitely I don't know if you can see but if you compare mm, as Christy Goss would say you can't tell from a galloping horse but there's definitely some asymmetry between this wing and this wing and I don't exactly know what happened but there are, there are some differences but that's okay so that is the child size feathering shawl and I don't ever want to really make another one but I'm very proud that this one is done and that I got it done with the yarn that I had so I didn't have to order more because that's a pain. So that is finished. I also finished, um, these were mostly done last time so I'm not even gonna talk about them very long but I finished these, mm, they're bright, uh, Patton's Croy, Screppy-ish. Um, they're not even they're not scrappy but they look like they're scrappy like the yarn has that kind of randomness to it but the main color is um, Patton Scroy Mexicala stripes I don't think I still have the tag Mexicala stripes Patton Scroy 
and then um, Patton's Karate in the color Flex for the heels, toes, and cuffs. I did the whole um, the whole pair out of a 50 gram skein, so I can get an adult size pair of socks on US 1.5s. I had been saying twos before US 1.5s, and I believe I did 56 stitches around. And then the pattern that I did was not actually a pattern, but um, I just did knit knit three, slip one one round and then knit around the next row. Um, so there's just like a tiny bit of slip stitch detailing. And they're really fun. At this point, my goal is to wear all of my socks in my Birkenstocks and my family judges me real hard, real hard. But it makes me really happy to see my socks. But these ones, I don't know. <laughs> I don't wear neon. I don't have any clothing in any of these colors. Maybe this yellow um, and definitely gray. But. <laughs> Yeah, this does not match my wardrobe at all, but it was yarn that was sent to me by um, a viewer and it's really fun and it's socks. Socks can be fun, but I don't know if it's Birkenstocks fun. That might be too much fun. So these might be like house socks. But I, I do like how it's like looks scrappy. So those are finished. And those are my finished objects. For whips, surprise, surprise, it's more socks because you must always have socks. Um, this is another Patton's Croy. I am feeling it on the Patton's Croy as of recently. Um, this, I have two 50 gram skeins of, so I'm doing longer ones. Um, and I don't know if I can really show you the texture, but I'm just doing some broken rib, which is like ribbing one row, um, knit one purl, one ribbing one row, and then knit the next row. So it creates very similar to the texture of this sweater. And I think there's variations on broken rib, but this is, I don't know what I consider standard broken rib. Um, so it is, yeah, knit one, purl one, and then you knit the next row throughout. So no pattern again, and this is Patton's Cry Socks. No, I bought this one. I was going to say this was sent to me too, but I bought this one. This is the color Gray Marl. And my go-to, which was sent to me, that I use all the time, Flax. For heels, toes, and cuffs, but I actually, I think I'm only doing the heel. I didn't do the cuff, and I don't think I'm going to do the toe. I'm trying to use, I need to learn how to do toe-up socks so I can, like, better use up all of my yarn, but I don't mind having scraps, so it's fine. Um, but I'm trying to make longer ones that would peek over the top of my boots, and this seemed like a reasonable color as opposed to, like, you know, having this peek over the top of your boots. Um, so this is a good, you know woodsy hiking sock looking like maybe not I knit my own socks <laughs> vibe um so again this is on the 1.5s I believe these are 60 stitches I did them a little bigger because of the ribbing um but yeah I'm making longer these are really boring to work on like really boring to look at like I, I rather work on this because you are like guessing what's going to come next and it's kind of fun this is like I am doing gray marled things for many inches but they will be cozy and really good um just winter go-to socks so not not super duper exciting but i like them so these i don't know i feel like i need to cast on another pair of smaller ones for my daughter for like christmas or something and like one of the more fun yarns because this is this is boring <laughs> socks are supposed to be my fun knitting uh, so what else is coming up whip wise? I am still waiting on the yarn for my fields cardigan. I cannot wait till it gets here. It should be shipping like any time now. Um, but yeah, dyed to order takes a while when you're ordering from a popular dyer. So that's okay. Totally within her like window that it should have been, but I was just kind of hoping it would be faster. <laughs> hmm. It was not. Um, so I'm still going to make the fields cardigan again. I will just not be making it with the testers. <laughs> But things are going smoothly. I like to have a second um, version or be able to frog my original version if I need to um, with testing, but I had sewn in all the ends. And um, so I wanted to have another one that I could work with testers in case something came up, but it seems like things are going very smoothly right now, which is very reassuring. <laughs> I like that when it's not like, actually everything you did was wrong and we hate it. That doesn't come up often, but it stresses me out every time <laughs> that it might. <laughs> so I am going to, get that started as soon as it shows up and hopefully I would like to have it to do like Christmas pictures or wear for Christmas or whatever um so yeah I want to get it done um 
Also, if throughout this video you noticed I don't have my wedding ring on, <laughs> I just realized I was rubbing it, I have a weird rash on my hand and I took it off. Um, and no normally, uh, like garden season, I put on like silicone ones, but that was bugging it too. So I don't, I don't know what that is, but yes, still married, still love Jojo forever and always. So there's that. Cause internet snoopers gonna snoop. And what else? I need to make myself a, a winged-ish mama owl outfit to go with the blue owl wings outfit so we can be owls together. Um, my husband is not really feeling it on the dress up, um, but I think he's gonna have a shirt that says something. Um, but yes, I have thrifted, I can't remember if I talked about it before, but I thrifted a jean jacket, a jean jacket from the children's section. <laughs> <laughs> that is like made of like a thin stretchy kind of jean and I'm gonna cut the sleeves off of it and then attach um, kind of Vincent yarn, yarn punk style um, somehow attach crochet onto it and crochet like big bell sleeves because I didn't want to do a shawl because I have to be kind of hosting this party as well and I need to have like functional arms <laughs> so if I have to like fly everywhere it's a little much but I figured if I do giant bell sleeves that'll count as owl wings right? I mean, we're, we're blue owls. We're making this up as we go. It doesn't matter. Um, so I need to get that done as well. And that's kind of it on the, on the whips front. Once I get the, uh, cowl pattern out, I do have another shawl quantity back here ish that I would like to get going for a design, but that'll probably be early 2022. Can you believe it's almost 2022? Yeah, I know. I'm still not over 2020 as are most of you, not as, as I'm sure a lot of you would agree. Ooh, it's time to end. Um, so yes, if you haven't subscribed already, this is the kind of content you'll be getting. Stick around. You'll like me. I promise. Um, I think, but yes, there will be a giveaway. So you should stick around for that. Um, coming up probably next episode. Like I said, stay tuned and thank you for being here and always hanging out with me and listening to my rambles and the weird stuff I make like owl wing shawls and really bright obnoxious socks and the like. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for being part of my yarning world and I will see you next time in episode 41. We're getting up there. Thanks guys.